Hi, my name is Steve. I uh, uh, attach these kits to the motorcycles here when they're done in the shop. Um, this is going to be a demonstration specifically for gold wings, 1200 and 1500 gold wings. Before we get started, there's some things that if you don't have them, it's going to be very difficult for you to get things done and it's going to be very a lot more time consuming. The first thing you want to do is you want to get a 2x4 and you want to make them in. If you had 20 blocks, it would be just about right. This size, then this size, maybe 10 of those, and then the smaller uh, half inch size. Everything has to start somewhere. You got the blocking. The next thing that I recommend, and you can buy these things at Lowe's, this is a steel 36 inch ruler, straight edge. I use this for marking for everything else, but for making measurements, it's so much better than a tape. I can measure from the floor to the point of the center here, and that will give me a number. The number that I'm looking for on a 1200 gold wing is 11 and a half. A 1,500 gold wing would be 11 and a quarter. This number is a false number unless you have a level, and you buy these, they're magnetic levels. If, if it isn't level, this is a false number. So you have to have it level. I'll get into the leveling process shortly. Buy one of these, they're not very expensive. Buy, buy two of these. They're uh, at Lowe's. They're a magnetic level. And get a regular level like this. You'll see the many different uses. A square like this, regular old carpenter square. One or two of these are also very important. At Lowe's, I bought a set of these. They're they're swivel, and they're not they're better they're they're better than uh, uh, the bigger ones because you can get them in and make the adjustments. Now that we have that straight, make sure that you have a pad and a pen. A gold wing is attached differently than the others. A center stand on the gold wing needs to be removed. You'll see, well, I'll take you over and show you that I leave the 1500 on the kickstand so that it's slanted. I lay a rug down next to it then I can easily see underneath what I'm doing. This is attached to the bottom of the motorcycle with this pin. You take this pin out, and in your kit you will have this that will go in place of it. That fits back in, and it goes back the same way as you took that out that's attached. Some of these have cotter pins through it. Some of them have little ridges that hold it in place. And if you have those with the ridge in it, you don't need to put the you don't need a cotter pin. Taking the cotter pin out, you just take a pair of pliers. I use a lot needle nose pliers. Pull them out. And they'll They'll, they'll break, get the pieces out, and slide it out. On the gold wing, on the 
left side as you're looking forward at the bottom of the motorcycle and we'll show you I'll actually point to it at the motorcycle there's only two little bolts that hold the bottom of it and it's you take that piece off the bottom you'll be able to slide this in and out and it'll give you room and it only takes a few minutes to take it off if you try to do it without taking it off you're going to pull your hair out because it just you're going to end up taking it off anyway so do it in the first place as soon as you have that have this piece put back together put it back on so that you don't lose nuts or bolts or screws or anything like that these are hard bolts this cross piece Cross pieces on the 1200 and 1500 gold wings are 32 inches from the outside corner to the outside corner. They are half inch thick steel and they are two inches wide. They act as a spring as well as being used for attaching. These bolts, and if you can see, there's slotted holes here. You put that there and you snug it not real tight you snug it use lock nuts also these are 9 sixteenths the 9 sixteenths wrench is the most used wrench in the whole deal I did it that way for uniformity the u-bolts the bushings Attachments are all 9 sixteenths. If everything isn't level, you're wasting your time. You do have to have a level. This serves as different things. This is the back of the motorcycle. The motorcycle tire will be in line with the kit tire. The kit tire, if you take a square and you can put it on the motorcycle tire and, and you'll be able to find exactly where it is. Why is that necessary? It's so that you have an idea that it's, e it's either exactly on the axle of the motorcycle or up to one inch behind the motorcycle. And that's important for the ease of turning. The other problem that I'll mention some things that are pointers as we go along. One of the things, 42 pounds of air in that front tire on that gold wing. Otherwise, that's, that's what you got to have in there. 32 pounds of air in the kit tires. You attach, you put this on, you attach this loosely. Your motorcycle is still on the kickstand. This then is put on. You're only putting this on first. You're not putting this on. Put this on first after you put this on. The guards on the motor, and that's how they're attached with the U-bolt. One of the problems that we've run into is most motorcycles have been dropped if they're got any age on them at all. The guards do get bent. Not normally um, bent enough to where they're a problem. There's ways to correct that, which we'll get into after. The width normally stays very close to the same. If, by chance, one of these, one side when you measure is bent in on the motor guard, there's a shim that will come with it. The 
the shim will fit right in here. Right in here, and that will give you a, a way to correct if the guard is bent. This, this would be like a section of the motorcycle frame. Now we're going to stop a second. We're going to go over and I'm going to point to some of those items I mentioned at the motorcycle before we get too far. This gold wing is, is slanted because it's on the kickstand. That is important because you want to be able to get underneath it and look at it. That's why the rugs are on the floor. Most people don't have a motorcycle lift in their garage. If you come to this side, you can see what I'm talking about. Now you, you've got room. The front piece, the front piece is put on snug, but not completely tight. You, Tight enough to where it'll hold in place, but with a rubber hammer, a rubber mallet, you'll be able to tap it and get it to move a little bit if you need to. What we're going to do now is, once you have this on, then you put, you have the center stand on, and that has that 32 inch crossbar that comes out. You're going to take and you're going to block from here to the floor and bring the motorcycle up level. The only true way is by putting the magnetic level on the brake, the uh, disc brake. If your motorcycle is an older model that doesn't have a disc brake, Believe it or not, at uh, a regular carpenter's level set on the seat of most of these, you'll find that the seat is actually level with it. But because I only have one eye and my depth perception is off, I have to block it. Then I have to put, make sure that the bubble is right on exact, straight up and down. Because when we put the kit on, when we on take the box off and you have the wheels on the kit, it's if you're not straight up and down, that's the way it's going to stay. And then you'll have to make adjustments all over again. So now you've got these two pieces on. On the other side, I'll show you where the two bolts are that little bolts that you have to take off to make it easier to do the uh, center stand. Okay. There is a nut here, or, or the, a bolt. They're self-tapping. they got threads on the inside. Then there's, th you can't, they're not hard to uh, line back up because they, They've got tabs on the front here that go in there. So don't be concerned about taking these two out and taking this off that you'll have trouble putting it back on. Number one, the kickstand will be off, so it'll be easier to take this off. Now, take the kickstand off before you take this off. Well, yeah, I have to take that back. You can scratch that one down. Mm. You have to take this off to get the to get the uh, center stand off. Okay. All right. So here are your two points here and here, and then of course you have the bar that goes across the back. We know on the 1200. We know that from the center of the wheel of the motorcycle to where the, the center stand bracket is and where that piece will be coming out is halfway between here and here. It's like 23 and 3 8 inch or, or whatever. But 
the kit will have the tabs already welded in place so you'll know that when you take that kit and you put it here that will tell you where this will attach if you're bent if this is bent you may on this side you might be this far back and the other side you might be a little bit up this way but the important part is that it's square with this and the square with that we'll go to the next stage here with a 1200 or a 1500 even though the kickstands are a little different I get a pad and a pen and I make a drawing and there's this point, this point, that point here, point out here, and the measurement from here to here. Those are the, the measurements that you need to know. Now, you've got your motorcycle level now, and it's all blocked. You're going to, these pieces here are on your motorcycle. This piece is attached to your front safety bars. This piece is attached to where your center stand was, and they're sticking out on either side of the motorcycle. Sometimes you will find that they, these might be slightly bent a little bit. Uh, they're, they're not, may not be perfectly straight. They will be this way, but not up and down. Um, that can be comp that will be compensated like this. If you look at it from the front. You'll see the, there's bushings, these red bushings that are between the bar that attaches to the motorcycle and the kit frame. Two here, two here, two, and two. Tightening this down, or tightening this down will turn this way. You have your level, and you have it placed here. But the first thing you do is when you put the kit on, is you just bring all of them, the nuts, so that they're level. They Maybe one thread sticking out. These are lock nuts. That gives you room to adjust, tighten, one or another place that you need to get it straight. This is, as you can see, the bubbles in the middle. If the bubble's on the right side, if you're looking at it, you have to tighten the right side to bring it in to the center. Try and do the same amount here as here. Your kit, each motorcycle is gonna be a little bit different. The center stand will be pretty consistent. This bar across here will be pretty consistent. This in, in the front, you're limited because you don't have any, you, don't, you have very little adjustment. So most of the adjustment will have to come from this bar back here. There's different shims, I will show. We've got shims that go under here, different sizes. I also use washers and what I, you don't want to take this side and squash it all the way down to get it level and not here. So what you do is you compensate by sliding a couple of these washers under. Now if both of, if you're, if you need to, you will need to raise this up, thinking of it as a teeter-totter. If you raise this up, 
This will stay the same, but the axle on the kit, when you pick this up, will come down. You will probably need to put a shim under it. With the shims come different length bolts. If you put shims in here, you will have to change the bolts. This will bring this up. Now, on this one here, as you can see, it's 11 and a half inches high. From the center, from the center here, it's 11 and a half inches down to here. If we were looking for a 11 and a quarter, you can either raise this with a shim or tight, if it just needs a little bit of adjustment, you can do it by tightening these down. The secret is having the same number here on both sides with the same amount of tension. With the tire on, this point will be like 12 and a half inches off of the floor with the tire on. So, if you're from here to here is 11 and a half inches, you're going to have to jack this up, put the tire on. That one inch, thinking of it as a teeter totter, will put the right amount of pressure on this tire to give the stability that you're looking for on a 1200 gold wing. 1500 gold wing is heavier, so I recommend that you go to 11 and a quarter. Um, some people might like it a little better one way or the other. You can you know, experiment a little. When you get your kit, when the kit comes to you, it will have running boards on here. The reason I don't have the running boards on here now is so that it's see the simplicity of this unit and because of the simplicity there's very little that's going to wear out now the distance from the fender this is where your fender is going to be okay. the distance this is where your saddlebags are going to be right here this distance here to here is basically controlled by the type of saddlebags. That's why it really is beneficial if you have some pictures that you can take of your motorcycle and send them to us with even some measurements. Take your bags on the motorcycle, open them up. When you have them open, you'll, you're not going to you, you're going to have to give us that dimension. And you take your tape on the motorcycle, and you run from one side of the bag, outside of the bag, to the other, and that's how we decide the distance from here to here. Your running boards. will cover whatever gap. This is adjustable when we make it. After it's made, it's not adjustable. You have to give us a good measurement. Some people, all they want to put in there is a pair of gloves and uh, a some clothes or that type of thing. You don't need an opening. However, if you plan on putting something like a helmet in there, which I advise a gold wing, of course, to put it in, that's what controls it. We also prefer that you send us a cover with the color as well as a picture so we can match the paint to that cover when we paint the fenders to match. There will be a wiring kit in the kit with all of the wiring that's necessary and I'll have a diagram and I'll have instructions. It's not really that complicated, it's very simple. I was at a show showing off some of the ones that we had built and we've built hundreds of these and an engineer from General Motors came by and looked at it and said that your suspension system will not work. I gave him the key to one of our motorcycles and told him to take it for a ride. When he came back, he laughed and he said, I'm an engineer and I just couldn't 
see how that would work but now that i see it i understand it's just simple it works like a teeter totter the adjustments are so simple i don't understand why these other people make everything so complicated that is the secret to long life for the ability to put it on you don't have to take the remove the rear wheel to put the kit on like the, like a competition you don't have to remove anything from the motorcycle to put these on with the exception of those two little bolt bottom of the motorcycle to get the to get it out now on an 1800 gold one, instead of having the center stand where this will fit i will show you the center stand from center stand on an 1800 will look something like this and it's got this is how it's attached so we make we also take the center stand off and we have that uh, that replaces it. It just bolts right in. You save the bolts when you take them out and you put them right back in. The center stand is the same. Now on the 1800s and on some of the newer 1500s, instead of having a D-shaped engine guard they just have one that comes out on those this has to be set in because the bar is in almost underneath the motor this particular one here is actually for an 1100 an old 1100 and that's a narrower bike and that's why it's set in but this would be what what your 1800 would look like the difference between the 1200, the 1800, 1100 is the distance from here to here because you want to keep this piece right up tight underneath the front because there's things like speed bumps that we have to be concerned about in Florida. Put this up as close as possible is because we want to give as much clearance underneath as we can. We recommend where, like, where this is fastened, tighten it up, tighten your bolts up, you take a hacksaw, or it'd be nice if you had a grinder, and you cut the bolts so that just the bolt itself would be look like this when you're done. It may not seem like much, but if this is hanging down very much, it, uh, it catches on stuff. It just is bound to. Simplicity, like I say, helps give it a longer life. It's still going to take you two people all day Saturday, a good day, to install because the first time you do it, it'll take that long. If you buy two from us, the second one that you install, you'll be able to do in probably six hours. Um, I always allow six or eight hours it normally does not take that long because you fine tune it once you have the tires on you have your tires on and it's on the motorcycle you're not going to be able to see what you're doing to adjust so you have to adjust without the tire on for you to see the, and be able to measure it after I have it on, because I've done hundreds of these, if I take it around the parking lot in the figure eight, I come back in. I don't need to take the tire off because I know it, it would need one turn here and one turn here. And after uh, you've done a few, you'll be able, you would be able to do the same thing. One of the things I hear people say that uh, I've got, a, I've got a, a guy that's got all kinds of experience working on motorcycles. That's not any benefit at all. If you tell me that the person has experience putting a sidecar on a motorcycle, and we do sell sidecars here and install them, now you're telling me that you've got some experience. Actually, the less you think in terms of being a, needing a, a motorcycle mechanic and think about it more as a engineering thing like putting a, 
uh, if you make a model airplane, it doesn't mean that you have the ability to pilot. What I'm trying to say is that it's designed for an average type of person who has tools, a grinder so you can cut off a nut, a drill press is always hand. Sometimes you may need a, a little because something might be bent on a motorcycle, it might not just be perfect, you might need to drill out a little hole a little bigger, and uh, that's what washers are for, to put in place of that type of thing, if you have to make an adjustment. Most of the time, everything bolts up, and then it's a matter of making your adjustments and you're driving out. But things aren't always perfect. And it doesn't matter if you know how to change oil or change tires in a motorcycle, that isn't going to help you. You're going to have to think simple. This is like a teeter-totter. If this goes up, that goes down. If this goes up, you're taking pressure off the tire of the motorcycle. You will find if you are uh, you are able to drive up on a curb, say this high, the motorcycle tire will stay and the other tire will stay on the floor. Because this is able to do that because it flexes. The benef that's very beneficial if you run over something, it's not going to flip you off the motorcycle. You're going to still have the two wheels or the three wheels. <laughs> On our website, there's instructions, written instructions. It doesn't hurt to read those. I guess that pretty well covers it. Harley Davidson's, Honda's, regular bikes like the one on the stand there, you're able to attach this bar directly to the frame. Now, the thing you have to keep in mind is motorcycle frames. An example is the motorcycle frame here, and this one is higher than it is on the other side. So that has to be adjusted with shims. The Harley Davidson's basically you can use a U-bolt. The Yamaha's most of your you can go right straight to the frame with a U-bolt. Those take a lot less time. Because of my hearing, I can't take telephone calls very often during the day because there's noise in the shop. Hello from Steve at hotmail.com. That's hello, H-E-L-L-O-F-R-O-M, Steve, S-T-E-V-E, -E, at hotmail.com, all lowercase letters. That's how I really prefer, because when you email me and you can detail what you have as a problem, you can also take pictures and put them in as attachments, and that saves so much. Now, Nomenclature. These red things here are referred to as red neoprene bushings. These are called 32 inch crossbars. These tabs that attach to the frame and attach and make a sandwich out of the neoprene bushings, these are called frame tabs. These are U-bolts. This is called the tailpiece. It can be removed, but you want to make sure that you tighten it. They're 15 16 bolts that tighten it, but you don't tighten it until after you have made your adjustments because it helps hold everything else in place. What I use these for? Are very, are very simple. I take these and I put them 
where the center of the rear tire is. Again, some of these are easier than others because there's saddlebags, because there's stuff here, you can't see it very well. But if you have a square and you've got a level floor, and even if you take a, a block of wood or a smaller level like this, you put it up against it, that will get you to the center of the rear tire. Remember, you're going to want the, the kit tire lined up here or up to one inch behind. Actually, an inch and a half doesn't even hurt. That will give you an idea where these braces go. They go on. And they just U-bolt right straight to the frame. Just a U-bolt. And they go right up like this. Bushings go in the same. Not complicated at all. The biggest thing is being able to get your U-bolts here. You want these distances the same on both sides. This is a small 750 cc motorcycle. Normally those frames are wide open and not bad. People put, if they need a new tire on their motorcycle, put a regular car tire on the back. Your motorcycle is not going to be turning or leaning over, and this will give you, with a car tire, more traction, both for braking. And now you can get on that front brake and even slide the wheel as an emergency stop, and you don't have to worry about it kicking out and dumping on you. You'll find that. Most, a lot of motorcycle people don't use the front brake hardly at all, and for that reason, I've dumped a few, unfortunately, because mostly it was needing to hard brake and hitting sand or something like that, where in this case, you can go on the front brake as hard as you want, and you can actually stop quicker with this than you can with a regular motorcycle. These are not very expensive. It's a good investment. They don't wear out. You have a, a socket set and a set of end wrenches, and you should be able to install it. Cut the blocks. Make sure you have all kinds of blocks uh, because you're going to have this bar and this bar put on the motorcycle after it is level and in order to keep it level you're going to have to use blocks i use this size but in order to make room to get the wrench in if you go with cutting them down in the half um, for the just the ones on the top I prefer to have this, the whole the whole one, but it makes it easier getting the bolt in. And this is what's going to hold you left. I prefer blocking it for the hold on the front bar, almost without exception. The problem being with a gold wing and why it's better. Uh, most adjustments you're going to make will be here, raising this. And most of the adjustment will be actually raising it up. This will swing. If you block it up, there's a chance that your motorcycle, if you're pushing on it one way or the other, pulling on it, it could roll off the block. So I recommend making sure that the motorcycle is in gear so it doesn't move. Make sure that. Uh, if you block this, it wouldn't hurt to block the wheels on the motorcycle so it doesn't move. The shims are regular shims like you put in a doorway. That's how much precise I want you to remember to have this, these 
shim so that the bike, when it's on these blocks, is perfectly, that bubbles right in the center. I can't express how important that is. You may find that one side is a quarter inch higher, half inch higher. So you may have to take, for instance, put a sh one shim only on one side because the measurement that you're looking for is from the, the base of this bushing. So here, the measurement that counts, let's see, here is five and three quarter inch. So if I put this shim under here, I'm gonna be six inches now, because I'm gonna be measuring from there. The idea is to have the same si the same distance as much as you can from one side to the other. And the reason for that is so that what you do to one side, you do to the other, and it keeps the motorcycle balanced. So you're talking about shim like this, or here on the gold wings. This also, if this is the motorcycle frame, and you're attaching this to the motorcycle frames, you can also shim a U-bolt like that. This has one hole, the course. If you're attaching a U-bolt to directly to the frame, you can have two holes. And you notice they're slotted. Those are punched, they're not drilled. That allows you to adjust to make it going straight down the road. The simplest way is, and that's why I love this, is I take, and let's just say this is the center of the rear tire. I take the ruler and I measure from the, I put it right up against the outside of the rear tire and I look and it's gonna be between 10 and 11 inches, somewhere in that area. This particular, where I've got this, let's just pretend this is the tire. I have 10 and a half inches here. I go over on the other side, making sure I put it in the same spot on the tire. And I'm gonna have 10 and a half inch. And if I don't have 10 and a half inch, let's just say one side is 11, the other is 10. You just loosen this up and you bring this around. This is how you adjust the bars on the front. The road bars on the front on this are close enough so that you're in line once you line this up. But very unusual that you're gonna to need to put a shim under here. Some washers between here and here. That gives you a... Uh, if for some reason this is bent, you look down at it, somehow or another, it got bent. I just put it in a vise. I have a spot that I take and I have a big crescent wrench and I can bend it and put it in the place I want. But if it's just a little bit out, let's just say your, your, your number, and the number that you're gonna get, if these are gonna be fairly close numbers, you're gonna have between four and a half and five inches on them. On the, and between five and a half and six on the front, normally. But let's just say you're a half inch off on one side versus the other. Just sometimes one washer like that will make them the same on either side. And it makes it a whole lot easier when you're gonna adjust them. So much of this is just plain old common sense.